Hey there, team. Welcome to a patch battle. Been a little while. Been a good while. Um, so, this is a little 3v3. We got a little brown. Oh, Angmar, Rudauer, and Isengard. That's a nice little uh, team, to be honest. We got the Nawaki Thanatos duo who's with them today. Hades of the Unknown. Interesting. Um, so I, I, well, I love Rudauer in Field and Siege, um, yeah, I talk about it a lot, like, Rudauer was the first faction that I actually started, like, racking up wins with in Field Battles, um, so yeah, big, big fan. Um, oh my god, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, yeah, I'll do this while the boys are all, like, lined up so nice like this for me. Uh, Than does here, Isengard, right now we still have the done landings, this is the, um, the currently the public version, uh, in the new version. No more Dunlandings. Isengard loses them. They go to the Dunlanding faction only. So he's got three of them there, making use of them while he's still got them. No armor upgrades for the boys, but I mean, why? Well, hey, they're nice and cheap, and to be honest, for what they do, great cost effective. Uh, Isengard infantry behind to back them up. Lots of Isengard infantry. Uh, half orc spear guards, so a lot of spear power. Because all those Dunlandings, they are great cav killers because they get the spear ability and the Dunlanding hatred of horses that comes from those uh, those you know, nasty straw-haired bastards. Then, uh, a Zeke Spear Guard next to them. Then the Crossbowmen, Skirms there, uh, Warg Riders, double Warg Riders. So again, more anti-cavalry ability. That's double Warg Skirms as well. And then over here, the Pike Line from Thanatos, along with the Naz High. Um, very nice. I mean, double crossbows. Um, it's very cool from Thanatos. Maybe he's got some Snaga, like, hiding somewhere, but... Maybe not. That's a lot of spears, though. I would definitely not want to be a cavalry force against them. To his side, Nawaki's got the Coldfell Maidens next to the Herendadai Nobles. So again, great cav-killing knights and the Canti, uh, what, Canti cav, anti-cav ability of the Coldfell Maidens. Rudauer Swordsmen, double Black Wolves. I love Black Wolves and Sieges, actually. I tend not to take them to field battles, so this will be interesting. Out front, the Rudauer Marksmen. Then Dunman Pikes, double Dunman Pikes. Single Horrendine Pike, Double Axe Thrower, and then the Itamore Troll Hunters and the Frogram Jabs. And even Hades has got himself lined up nicely for me. So he's got his Pike Line, uh, Black Watch Legionnaires even, um, yeah, on the side of the line. We'll see where they end up. Gundabad Guard, over here, the Angmar Marauders, cool shout. Gardens of Karndoom, Blackguard, more wargs, the Trolls of Angmar, and the Trolls of Gundabad. No longer got the, uh, these trolls. Wait, actually, shoot, which trolls do we lose? Which trolls do we lose? I can't quite remember, actually. I think, is it the Trolls of Angmar that we lose? Well, either, either way, we lose one of them. So, good to see them while we got them. Uh, we will start now. So, well, <laughs> we'll start the main battle anyway. 16,000 frames, so, so it is quick. For a 3v3, that is quite quick. But considering Angmar is usually a very fast faction, especially when they're not taking uh, their Barrow Whites, there's nothing to slow them down here. So they're going to be getting stuck in quick. Maybe there are Barrow Whites hiding somewhere, but I don't believe so. Oh, we'll see when they get started. Maybe they do have some Barrow Whites tucked in. But Rude Hour, of course, very quick, very aggressive. And uh, Thanatos' army here, it's not built for skirmishing, <laughs> that's for sure. It's uh, its not really a charging force. There's a lot of shields at play. Isengard is, is great armor across the board, you know. Uh, the only guys that don't really have armor are the Dunlendings, and you've got a lot of numbers for them to make up for that. So, yeah, um, very cool. As I say, I think... And um, what do we have here? Imladris, uh Dale, maybe? And then the far side, um, Dol Amroth, perhaps. I might be mixing it up, what this blue is here, um, and what this dark blue is. I'm often a bit silly with that. Maybe Linden. I think Linden's blue, aren't they? Um, I always think they're white, but no, I'm pretty sure they're blue. So, either way, we've seen from all of the evil uh, of this trio, they've got a lot of anti-cavalry ability. Um... We are going to be wanting to shoot them down. Uh, I mean, what I'd be wanting to see if I was on the, the supposed good side here is heaps and heaps of archers. Uh, Imladris, I was correct. Oh, we've got Ponta. Ah, cool, cool, cool. So he's got his... Sorry, I got distracted by Ponta. Uh, Neuratino warriors there with an armor upgrade today. 
a uh, great little well, hybrid but dedicated archer. <laughs> <laughs> screen it uh, lots lots of arrows uh but they can definitely mix it up in melee uh, god hunt to their side archers of rivendell so this is a good start this is kind of what i wanted to see as i say swords of rivendell with that armor upgrade mixed in with sentinels so that's a very very nasty pike line over here to the flanks of it though we've got the spears of rivendell those halberds basically um that's actually what seems to be making up most of the line it's only really that center that we've got the sentinels so that's going to be a bit of an issue if we end up going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Isengard Phalanx. Yes, our AP is going to be great to get through that uh, Urukai armor, but pikes out. Pikes are longer than spears. Um, over here, Elder Emway Archers and more Neuratino Warriors. So again, I'd be pretty scared seeing that if I was uh, if I was our boy. And then two Riders of the Bruinen. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of Archers, but this is Ponta. I know... He's, I think by this point he's been taking quite a big break, but Ponte is very good. Uh, he is definitely quite a skilled player. Uh, Gwaithi Rockdor and then the Elder Enweight Lancers as well. So we have to be a bit careful with them. I mean, the Gwaithi Rockdor are, God, Gwaithi Rockdor. But the Elder Enweight Lancers, a bit worried about that. Dale, again, frick, of course, heaps of archers from Dale. Uh, Dalian Royal Guard there. This is uh, Smeagol. Smeagol has a beard. Uh, so Smeagol. Uh, so he's got his Dalian Spears there too. The Phalanx line of those... Uh, barring herd and the dismounted earls of dale incredibly tough to get through very very powerful but once again halberds not pikes and in front of them the barding marksmen or barding marksmen blackshot dragon slayers more of these spears and daily and spears so again lots of spears i'm uh, sorry lots of arrows oh there are barrow whites over there we did spot them and over here on this very far side we have numenor oh shoot <laughs> numenor is actually that very very dark blue uh, and this is Church. Church 762 from the Istari. I don't actually know Church. Uh, but anyway, he's got his Belgar archers, Numenorean steel bows, and more Belgar archers. And I suspect a Shadow Bows here, perhaps. Uh, that's who we've got hiding. A Belgar pikes there. No armor upgrades. I don't believe. Don't believe the armor upgrades for the boys today. Belagar footmen behind them. They'll pro the Belagar footmen will probably stand up front to shield from any arrows soon. Numenorean cohort, shield guard behind, and the Farzim swordmasters guard in general today, with the Farzim nobles ready to, well, catch any enemy cavalry and do some melee cavalry charges, I'm sure, as well. So, yeah, um, well, I mean, what we're seeing immediately from Thawak Thawaki, uh, Thanatos and Nowaki is they are merging in together and it looks like Hades is joining them. I'm a big fan of that, for sure. But, I mean, when the enemy has, the enemy definitely has the ranged advantage here. If we're, shunt, if we're crunching up together, this is going to be quite scary. We're going to be exposing ourselves to a lot of shooting. Warg Riders there. Um, I mean, a lovely target for the Bruin in, the Riders of the Bruinen. They're going to be getting rinsed by that. Wargs may have um, two hit points. You know, they're quite sturdy. But um, they're very, very big. Big? <laughs> Sorry. Very big, beefy targets. Um, and a lot of them are lacking shields. So they're going to go down quick. They're going to get very good damage uh, done by these Riders of the Bruinen. It's definitely something the Wargs hate to, well, be shot at by horse archers. It's a good little counter to them, I feel. But Thantos is already lined up alongside Nowaki. Nowaki's got his Rude Hour Swordsman out front. Only, and again, only guarded by one Archer unit. This really is, if if the goodies here, because we've got well, Numenor being a being good guy today, um, which they often are. Numenor's, you know, nice for most of its history. Um, they're moving forward. And if they're careful here, and they get all of their ammunition used, or a lot of it used effectively this is gonna be a tough mountain even with like say the the melee power superiority that we're seeing from some of these evil units um it's gonna be a tough hole for the boys to climb out of because there's still as i say the likes of that barding hard line the Imladris defensive line even the belagar pikes are more than enough to go toe to toe well more than enough to best the likes of the dunman pikes um it's going to be interesting. And again, keeping the cavalry safe. Um, I mean, from army composition right now, I'm I'll, I'm like feeling more in favour of the, of the good guys today. 
um, and it's kind of it's going to just be a case of how well they can use their equipment and how well the boys can I mean, yeah like having to use the crossbowmen as skirmish archers is is never fun yeah they have armor they've got decent armor value but they've got no shield um they're going to get outranged by anything that's shooting at them but thanatos might be willing again this is my play style he might be willing to lose a good portion of them saying that though this is a field battle this isn't a pitch so you really don't want to lose many of those guys because you might not you're going to struggle to get all the ammunition used hmm uh, in the shorter time period Again, getting all the way around Ponta, just taking his time here. Very good to see those war riders pushing through now. That they don't have to worry about the uh, the riders. They maybe are like coming out here to try and make sure they can't escape. But still, those swift elven horsemen are going to be very fast. Those little horses, basically, you know, barely having to lift anything there. Those fragile little boys on top. Again, coming into the skirms, wanting to just destroy what little mobility Thanatos has. I say this is really, a, it's a position I start to get very nervous in. I hate it when the enemy can sort of be getting around me. Um, yeah, like, and this is this is probably where I'd be wanting to get aggressive. And that's a mistake, you know. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough situation here. Um, having a better look at Hades' army now that things have popped up. He does have these Snaga archers super for basically just yeah like taking a bit of a beating or just yeah like pouring shots onto these guys but this is Numenor they I mean even the Belgar guys have some have some decent armor but most of these uh most of these Numenorians like sturdy sturdy guys are just gonna be walking through that low damage snag of fire um but yeah I mean the trolls are gonna be tough to tough to counter we don't have too much in the way of like troll killing ability from the Numenorians today Okay, I'm, I'm going to say at one time speed, but I do definitely think we'll slow down at some point in this fight. Riders pulling it back there, and there's been... Oh, okay. One guy getting caught there just by the snag of skirms, but that was a good catch. But still, I'm, I'm quite surprised that Ponta was able to sort of thread the needle there. Over here, he's not been so lucky. But still, no, no, he's gotten away. So that's quite well done from Thanatos. Yeah, you can see he did sort of set up a little a little thing to catch them her endine nobles a bit faster than wargs they are horsemen coming on down it'll be more than enough to best those uh, riders of the bruin in um snag at archers pouring shots in i think hades is going to be happy enough with this he's taking fire from the enemy onto his little snaga um this is something that church i don't feel church should be doing Ooh, ow, ow, ow. yeah okay so we've not actually done it so the Belgar footmen are behind the Belgar pikemen line. So those poor Belgar pikes don't have a shield in front of them. We need those Belgar footmen just a few steps forward. He's he's got the right idea, but he's just not positioned perfectly. Good stuff the steel bows are holding their fire though. I was a bit worried that they would be rattling shots in as well. Uh, so we're rinsing these Snaga archers. And when the Snaga archers are dead, that's going to be very nice. It's going to give us a lot of control, but... We've used up that that arrow fire needs to go into the infantry. We cannot waste even Belagar archers at this point. We cannot waste their ammunition on little crap archers. We've got to we've got to be whittling down these powerful um, melee forces. That really is what it needs to be used for. But yeah, so. Um, over here, yeah, done landing clansmen, still just staring them down. I like that everybody's sort of mixing it up here. Nobody's doing anything too crazy. What do we have? War riders going toe to toe with the fires and nobles. Now, those fires and nobles are going to gut these poor wargs, but I mean, what I always feel with wargs up against melee cavalry is I don't know, like, yeah, yeah, I'll say it, I'll say it. You'll almost always get your cost, you know. Like, that looked really bad. But, I mean, there's a dead, there's a dead horseman or two. These guys are two hit points. So are those wargs, to be honest. But, um, that, but the wargs are less than half the cost of those fires and nobles. Maybe, no, I think they're probably about half the cost of those fires and nobles. So, to be honest, as crazy as it is for Hades, I would have maybe just stayed there. 
because if you could have just deleted that unit of fires and no not deleted it but you you could have really rattled down that unit of fires and nobles maybe would have been quite happy but he doesn't really have much in the way of like other spare wargs does he once those war riders are gone he'll really have to be relying on his on his allies to back him up Again, looks like Ponta's advancing. Yeah, we did exchange a bit of fire, killed a few of those crossbowmen. Looks like he pulled them back. Didn't really want them to be getting too much of a beating. Yeah, dating down to 94. Don't know where the other unit is right now, though. Antos is pulling back a bit. Dale. Dale could be a little bit closer, maybe, but uh, he's just wanting to hold his fire right now. Okay, now you see this is maybe an issue. I think this is maybe what the boys are doing. Um, what I would consider right now if I was the bad guys, if I was Hades, I would say I'm going to use my full army taking on Numenor if you, Rudauer, give me half. Because he's so far away, nobody can give him support. So Hades, 1v1 here, would do alright. But even with a little bit of support, you can turn a what would be a, a messy fight to being a really good one-sided stomp, especially up against something of, of low numbers like Numenor and, and high sort of range dependency like Numenor in this case. Those uh, those steel bows opening up looks like they're just going, oh no, they're going into these trolls. They're actually rattling in those poor trolls. Very good. But uh, let me slow down to 0 0.8 for a second. I might have to slow down more in a minute. Steel bows firing up and over. You saw that was a bit of a shame. How is the front line going? Very, very well for now. I don't think that's going to continue forever. So Numenor over here, Church has... Well, I mean, he can't he can't pull away from this now. He's fully involved now. So he's just got to trust in that, you know, that, that proud Numenorean ability. And uh, yeah, give it, uh, give as good, give as good as he can um, to these, uh, these wretched orcs. But... As I say, oh, there's even Naz High. Okay, this is good. Yeah, because this is what the bad guys need to be doing here. They need to be sending support to make sure that this is a very weighted fight against Numenor, which is going to spark the good guys over here into action. But, as I say, they their power here is, is range. Their power is their archers, so they need time to, to whittle the enemy down. Whereas to respond to this, we need to be rushing, we need to be getting involved, we need to be punishing them when they are, while they're used up, while they've, well, they are, they're, while they've tied up a lot of their fancy units. We need Cav over here too though, that's something we could do, we could get the Gwaithi Rock Door over here, we could get Cavalry assisting Numenor, um, got some burning going on there, we might have Witchers actually at play, uh, or in play I should say. Warg Riders there tied up. Still, I mean, relying on this Numenorean power, the Belagar Pikes, you know, hey, always good. Shadow Bows engaging there. I'd be surprised if those Shadow Bows have used up all their ammo. I'd be really surprised. Um, steel Bows, probably, Steel Bows have probably used up their ammo. You can see they're in guard mode, though, uh, so they're not really fighting back. Not that they bear too well against the trolls anyway, but those trolls are having a great time just because they're in guard mode right now and they're not really fighting them. Um, so yeah, this is not really... I mean, Church Church pushed out a little bit too far there. I did like his positioning at first, but he's he's lost, you know, he's, he's away from his allies. Now, something like this can be quite effective if your army is built around doing it. You know, I quite like doing stuff like this where it's like, okay, guys, I'm going to lose this fight. But I'm gonna make sure that I kill more than more than what they kill of me, and um, I think with Numenor, it's it's probably a decent faction for that sort of situation because you can kind of rely on most of the boys sort of fighting to the better end. Yeah, Dunman Pikes, and this is what I want to see. We've got Isengard and Rudauer here. You don't have to send much, but just a little bit of support just to make sure it goes really in your favour. Ruda, uh, sorry, Herenidae Nobles are over here too. Do we have any friendly cavalry? Only half the enemy really, it looks like the, it, it's just our boy here. It looks like it's just Numenor kind of being left on his lonesome as the... We can see I, sorry, Ladris and Dale advancing forward, but once again, you know, they're not able to just go for a rush attack here. 
this done landing just um shield this this spread out done landing shield uh, will catch any any quick movements you can barrel through it pretty easy but you know it'll slow you down uh, slow you down enough to be responded to looks like Smeagol is advancing now to pour some shots in but uh, I think what well, it's done now it's basically done. Numenor is, is kind of off the field here. He's got as far as him no well, sorry, as far as him sword masters. He's got a few of his guys that are gonna be fighting, hopefully, to the very last man. But this has been oh dear, those those uh, witchers have used up a lot of ammunition too, hopefully. Um ammunition from the axe throwers. So this is gonna be looking very nasty for Church, but he has used up enemy resources. He has gotten some decent kills, I'm sure, but uh, but this was very well done by the uh, by the bad boys today. Uh, more burning there from Witchers. Still a full complement of Witchers, but uh, they've probably used up a good bit of ammo. The nobles, yeah, that's good. Just just throwing them around. You can charge the likes of those uh, those archers because I mean I mean if I was. If I was those archers, I'd just be going into the back of the axe throwers. I'd just try and whittle down numbers at this point. Um, as much as I could. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's doing. Charge is just coming in. Okay, so he's ignoring the archers and he's going for the units that can actually do damage, which is fair play. So he's just going into the uh, the likes of the poor Fires and Swordmasters. I'm going to have to remember to take a screenshot at some point. But no, that, that, was, a, that was a good start for the bad guys. And it looks like Imladris has come on forward now with that battle line. Now, they are cleansing through this. I knew they'd do it fast, but that is quick. Those Br uh, Dunlending Clansmen broken there. Um, not terrible morale from Dunlending Clansmen, but, you know, when they're by themselves out there like that, they are not going to last long. Okay, this is a bit scary now for the bad guys, because uh, this attack is going a lot better than I thought it would. Um, and the, the backstabbing from the Gwaithi Rock door as well. We've already got these guys running through. I'm surprised that that didn't break the bloody um, uruk -hai infantry. Over here, Riders of the Bruin in. Good, they've out... Oh, shoot, come on, you... Let me see the charge. It did, it did land a decent charge. Those are pikes, though, so we need to get out of there quick. Dale hasn't charged in yet, but Dale is... It, like, I mean, if I was Dale right now, I'd be opening fire. Even if I wasn't getting the best targets, I would just be opening fire on these lines. Blackwold's great little target. I know they just popped up from being hidden, but uh, I would target the heck out of them right now because you can get some great cost damage against that. Coldfell Maidens, they're trying to answer to this, but this is a bit beyond them. They can they can skirmish with, uh, with these cavalry units, but they cannot best them. Dunlending Clansmen returning from routing. They're not going to be able to do too much, but there's a lot of, lot of numbers that can just sort of be thrown back onto the front lines. It's very messy. Athanatos has got his pikes trying to reorganise now. God, poor Gwaithi Rockdor getting caught by that. A lot going on, a lot of micro-attention darting back and forth from Ponta, I'm sure. He did very well to get those Gwaithi Rockdor out of there alive. Those pikes taking arrow fire left and right right now. They're not around a shield. Hyrenodyne Pikes, don't have to worry about that. They've got the shields themselves. Let me just grab a quick screenshot here, just because I will. Uh, there's a lot going on. Let's let's actually go down to 0.6 for a quick minute. Um, good little bud. We're taking risky backstabs here. I know we've got to take risks. We really have to take risks, but I would be... I'd be wanting to stay away from that. Those Pikes oh, almost broke. Imagine if we broke those Hyrenodyne Pikes. Barding Herd arriving now. Dale properly clashed in. Those dismounted earls of Dale. Heavy, heavy armor. Assisted by, by the Dwarven Smiths of Erebor. They are they are very, very sturdy. So I'm just looking out my window. That is a delivery man. Hopefully he can just drop it at the door. I don't need to run down. I don't like to interrupt my <laughs> recordings too much. Uh, River Patrol moving forward. I mean, I don't really know what I'd be throwing at, but... Barning Marksman still firing away. Okay, cool. So, I mean, that's not actually as much coming back as I thought. I thought we had a lot more troops. I thought Angmar came off a lot better than that. That engagement. But either way, he's coming in. Herenidae Nobles are free. 
they can they can get messy in amongst all of the elven archers and, and the Dalian archers. That's not going to be fun for them. Uh, and the Angmar sledgehammer onto the flank. Okay, that is actually that that's a decent amount. It's it's more it's more troops than I thought. Dalian spears are going to hold it back for a little minute, but not too too long. Those trolls of Angmar are pretty healthy. Um, I think it was the trolls of Gundabad that were getting shot up by those uh, armor piercing archers. Gwaithi rock door getting tied up by the uh, axe throwers right now. Looks like the far right flank of the evil forces is pretty much in just disarray now. Yeah, Thanatos is. Well, I mean, this is what Isengard is good for. Isengard is. Um, I really. Uh, I recommend two factions when it comes to like new players. Not that Thanatos is a new player, of course, but I tend to recommend Isengard and Erebor to new players, kind of because they're good, they're pretty balanced, but decent morale, good armor across the board, and pretty numerous units as well. Uh, and the reason I suggest that is because these fact, well, these factors really allow their forces to hold out a bit longer so that you can kind of learn what is happening to your units. Um, sometimes if you're playing as something like Lord Forbid Mirkwood, um, when when it goes bad, it goes bad like a freaking snap. It, it You can go from dominating the enemy to like, oh, why am I running? Why am I dead? Because um, your units are quite fragile and you don't have those numbers. Uh, whereas, yeah, as I say, something like Isengard, you've got a lot more numbers, you've got a lot more armor, you can stand a lot longer and gives you a chance to see what's going on and that's always beneficial no matter how, how much you've played the game just being able to take time to like sit back and actually look and see how your units are being affected by something river patrol there to be honest those river patrol kind of get a decent surround on those guardians but uh and a few of the pikemen too but uh, they're not gonna last too long right now victory is certain but it won't be forever those guys are getting a shield in the new version, so a bit more, a bit more solid, but still very lightly armored. And yet, no, it's the Angmarim swarm now. I see there was there was a lot more Angmarim than I thought from first glance. Do we have our bows? We do have our bows out. We've got a lot. Well, not a lot. We've got a bit more ammunition. We need. I would just have these guys on fire at will now. Just, just get them popping off shots at anything they want. Anything that uh, is, is a possible target, I would just let them fire away. Um, because I would not want to risk them getting caught out in melee uh, without without having spent their full quivers. This is not uh, Warhammer Total War. We don't have to worry about the balance of power being affected just because we've loosed a few arrows. I know it makes sense. It makes sense in the balance of power, but it's something, it's a bit of a gripe for me. I don't like my blooming sister of Avalon force running to run away just because they've used up half their ammo. It's like, no, stop it. Stay, girls. Um, Barding herd moving forward. We're trying to keep up with the Bloom Elves. Who just, yeah, once again, Thanatos having just thrown more and more and more of these Urukai into the meat grinder that is the Elven Dalian force. Um, but Clansmen actually backstabbing them here. Very good. Uh, the morale of those uh, clansmen isn't going to allow them to do that for too long, though. Warg riders there, free and clear. Urukai infantry actually pushing through into the Nuratina warriors. Um, is that actually... That's... Oh, that's almost a man-for-man -man fight. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm kind of surprised that the Nuratina warriors aren't actually... Oh, balance now. I don't think the Nuratina warriors win that, but like I'd expect the them to do okay. Buddy. Especially with that armor upgrade off, that they've man. received. Work riders being a bit free, getting in amongst the more militia forces of the, the Archers of Rivendell, just the general citizenry. Uh, Nuratina warriors opening up. Blackshot dragon slayers. Okay, okay, good. We do have some elites remaining. Dunman pikes, heavy unit here coming forward, starting to poke and prod at the Dalian Royal Guard. Maybe that's uh, the Blackshot Dragon Slayers can come in. If they, if they come into the flank of those Dunman Pikes, those Dunman Pikes will be finished in two seconds, I swear. Um, over here, River Patrol. Absolutely amazing, boys. No, come on, I was just about to... Uh... Man, that's the Barding Marksmen. That's 72 Barding Marksmen out of there. That's a stinger. And that frees up the cavalry. Smeagol doing the right thing, trying to sort of reorganize there, keep, uh, keep uh, his back watched. 
Oh, that's the Dalian Spear's broken too. That's 77. So there are a lot of things for him to chase. He can't chase everything. Um, Bardian Marksmen over here have returned. Got their bows out. Just shoot something, mate. We need to be on fire at will. We need to be just going for whatever is a clear target. Because this is certainly winnable. I don't want people to be, like, at this point, I, well, it's tough. It's tough for the good guys here. But I think this is still winnable for the boys. Barning heard there, if our morale holds. If our morale holds, we've still got the elites in melee. Um, fraud from Javs, there, we've still got this sort of powerhouse situation here, which is still not really met its match. I know it's saying defeat is certain, but I think that's just due to the, the firepower that's coming into them. The fraud from Javs are not going to make that easy, though. Which they were still... Are those enslavers I was seeing? Oh, Nas High, even worse. They're busted. They're a bit busted. Those Nas High have been fighting for a long time. They were out fighting the Numenorians as well, you've got to keep in mind. A few crossbowmen left, still with their crossbows out. So yeah, losing a few of them has uh, made it difficult for them to use their ammo. Cold Fell Maidens, that's great. Yeah, having a unit like this later on in the game, just to go chase these routing units off. Um, I mean, they've got, what, a charge of two? Really not uh, not too impressive, but um, I mean, they're still still a girl on a horse. She can still, uh, you know, give a, give a good charge there. Uh, but I'd be more wanting to use them to chase off some of these bigger routing units. Just catch those guys. Not quite glamorous work, but uh, but it's important work, especially when you're dealing with these elves that will certainly return uh, to the fight if there's uh, yeah if there's any chance of victory. Neuratino warriors there blasting shots off into the into the gardens of Karn Doom. But as I've said it, I said it before, and I don't want to go back on myself. Like I would just be wanting to be on fire at will. Um, if I got if I got the micro ability, if I got the micro attention, I'd be picking targets. Keep in mind though, we're going through this at 0.8 speed. Uh, that is slower than what would have happened to the players. I always got to sort of stress that when I go through these pitch battles. People are maybe looking at things and I'm looking at things and thinking, oh, that was a silly move, don't do this, don't do that, blah, 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 blah. The bo this happens way faster uh, than, um, happened way faster for them than it does for us. That's a good break. That's what we needed. A few rude hour swordsmen, okay, but those those Dunman pikes won't run it off is a good good thing to see. They'll return though, 77 maybe. I still think they'll return, but um, but not for a little while, and not before those Blackwatch Legion have been very, very punished. Dragon Slayers will love that fight for sure. Um, not too reliant on the armor. Uh, those Dragon Slayers, I'm pretty sure they are they're quite sort of skilled with those massive blades um i think their weapon is changing in the next version it? so it's, it's going to be a bit of a shame to lose these you know big old anime swords i do quite like them and of course the captain with his dual uh dual well, dual sided sort of spear and uh, yeah no, i'll be quite quite sad to see that go but yeah dalian spears holding back the barrow whites that's still a very beefy unit of barrow whites these guys trying to run away from the warg riders to be honest if you turn around and charge the Warg Riders there, that might have been them finished. Um, because there's only six of them. And these are barding marksmen, you know, they, they've got a decent melee attack. But this is this is kind of the, the only hope now, is, is the elites there. Because I don't know... Oh, shoot. Didn't realise we still had those Hurrendine Nobles. That's a beefy force of Nobles. They'll be able to sort of charge this stuff down, I think. River Patrol returning to the fight, that's good. But no, okay, it's starting to get a bit nasty now. Well, no, that was that was pretty impressive, actually. I, I think um, I, I didn't actually see that coming, that, that charge toward the Angmar forces. That was a great move uh, from the bad guys here. I think it was very, very, very clever. Oh, General with the Frog from Jabs. That's a kind of cool shout. Um, yeah, very cool show. I like, I really like Frog and Jabs, and it, it, it makes a bit of sense, you know, it gives him an AP, uh, AP blade as well. Um, maybe can't keep him quite as safe as the, as the Berserkers can, but if you don't want to take Berserkers and you definitely want to take Frog and Jabs, you know, okay, I like it, I like it. Uh, Witchers there, they've been guarding the, the General of Angmar? Maybe, no, no, he's not. He might be in with the Black Guard, of course. But yeah, so I think this is really where the only, uh, the last stand is is occurring. 
um, with our last sort of thousand frames, just under a thousand frames now. Um, daily in general just fall in there. But yeah, I think that, oh man, yeah. So I think had Numenor expected that charge, um, even without support, had he just been like, right, they're about to charge me, pour my shots onto them, get ready for my last stand. I think he could have bled them out a bit more, and they, but the thing is, the good guys needed to shunt up a little bit earlier. You know, what they did was awesome, but they did it basically after Numenor was just about gone. Uh, you know, had that charge into Thanatos' lines happened even like three minutes earlier, you know? Um, yeah, like three or four minutes earlier, I think this would this could have gone very, very differently because Thanatos would have been fighting by himself for a bit longer. Um, we wouldn't have been able to pull the forces back. We wouldn't have been able to mess about with the units of like, you know, the Hyrenidae nobles and all that. Um, but I think, yeah, it would have been awesome to see the Gwaithi Rock Door rotten up over here, catching the catching the Bloomin' Hyrenidae nobles and giving, you know, showing them what's for. Um, and yeah, just getting some slams in while the enemy charges. That's always such a nice time to charge down the enemy is when they're actually charging you. I always find. And then yeah, again, just be maybe being a little bit too careful with our ammunition, uh, from like from the likes of Dale and so on. We could have sort of poured a few more shots in a bit earlier. Um, but yeah, let's let's see what we got. Um, oh yeah, of course this is from Nowaki's point of view. For some reason I thought it was Thanatos's. Um, Roger Javs, very nice. These poor troll hunters, dear me. Must have been shot up or slammed by a charge. Axe throwers. A lot of those axes going into the Numenorean lines. Which to be honest, I mean with, with what was on the on the cards today, I would have personally not taken the axe throwers, but I don't really take axe throwers most of the time, in all honesty. I'm uh Yeah, um I don't know, I don't know. I, I like I like AP. Uh, from the javelins and i like i really like rude hours melee uh, forces so i probably wouldn't have taken them but you know we got some decent work from them and those uh, troll strike throwers are actually they, they can mix it up in melee pretty decently they don't have a shield they don't have like that much damage but they got they got a bit they can do some work uh rude hour marks from there actually racking up some decent kills and being pretty healthy they didn't actually take much fire uh herenidine pipes we did see they were put in a nasty spot uh, that's why they didn't really rack up that many kills. Also, they were up against heavily armoured uh, daily forces. So, yeah, I mean, as I say, outranging their halberds. But the enemy had AP, and you don't. Uh, is always a bit of a rough thing, too. Dunman Pikes there. Again, kind of just shunting into pretty well armoured, pretty well prepared enemy is never fun. But they, they did their best. Enslavers. Yeah, it's kind of cool. You know, usually in this sort of scenario, you'd see the enslavers have the general, the fraudrum jabs don't. Um, but I think, yeah, having him in with the fraudrum jabs just meant that he could throw in the enslavers kind of more willy nilly. Black Wolds to an open field was a very cool shout. Um, up against Dale, very risky because, yeah, that would be easy, easy pincushion target. I'm sure that they did. You can see that there's 97 of them have been healed. Or those present, no, no, those are healed which I usually think that that means they were shot, because I usually see like healed, um, you, you tend to heal range damage before you heal melee damage. So I think that's probably what it was. Uh, they did definitely take a bit of a beating, but the nobles there, and yeah, good on the Colfell Maidens too, but the nobles doing some great, great work all across the field. Very, very fearsome unit uh, with their maces in melee. But no, that, that was a good bit of fun. Uh, I do always, I always, I always enjoy a, a nice pitch battle, and I'll say that that had a good sort of ebb and flow to it. Uh, I wasn't too sure where it was going to go for a while there, especially when Pontus sort of hit with that charge. It was a bit, it was a bit shaky. But yeah, cool, cool. Thank you guys very much. I will see you later.